So as some of you may know, there are a lot of accusations out there about Onision. There are places on the internet you can find talking about these accusations, and I found one I'd like to go through today. As many of you know, I'm painfully honest. I know, refreshing, thank goodness. A human being that isn't afraid of the truth for once. So I'm gonna go through these and tell you exactly how it is. So as my ex-wife and I met in high school, we were married from 2005 to 2010, because I remember that's true. Apparently my ex-wife said I went through almost a year of heavy counseling to get over the mental abuse I suffered. I had situational depression slash PTSD from all that occurred. This person has this quote, it was the only time she ever spoke publicly about the relationship. They will not source as she has received so much harassment. Okay, so if you're not going to source your information, how can we trust you? All you are is a bunch of text. Regardless, the first time I ever broke up with my ex-wife was because she was horribly depressed and I told her I could never make her happy. And then we were friends for a while, but because we had previously been in a relationship, we wound up having sex once. And then I went off to join the Air Force. She visited me when I was through with basic. We had sex there too. And then not long after, I asked her to marry me because again, she was a very good friend who I was comfortable having sex with because we had been in a relationship prior. So I figured how cool it would be to take a friend with me wherever I went. My point being, she's a depressed person. And of course, this blog doesn't acknowledge the fact that she had already agreed to get back with me after she had falsely accused me of being abusive, which kind of shows you how dishonest she is. It just seems to be something that people do once they get dumped. Because ask yourself, if people accusing me of being abusive were actually being abused, and why is it in many cases they were willing to get back with me after they suggested I was so abusive? Anyway, they mentioned that I publicly threatened to kill myself if she didn't stop forcing me to make alimony payments, and that is true. I did publicly threaten to kill myself. I have no defense for that because publicly threatening to kill yourself is really stupid, especially since that was a manipulative tactic and I had no actual intention of killing myself. Essentially, it was because I was very angry that she lied her way into getting about $90,000 out of me, actually over $100,000, so I was already paying her alimony before the court even ordered me to pay alimony. As you know, I care, despite the fact that after I asked her to sign divorce papers, I told her she could stay in the house, it wasn't as if I was kicking her out, but you know, who cares about that, right? Let's only focus on the negative about Anisian that we don't know for fact is true or not, because you're dishonest people. This says I met a fan through my own website in 2011. It's not true, she was actually a hater. I only thought she was a fan, but a while after we broke up, it was brought to my attention that she was actually posting hateful things about me until she gained my affection, in which case she pretended to be a fan. How creepy and crazy is that? Anyway, apparently she said that we drove back to a hotel room, we walked in the door, she sat down her bag, and instantaneously I started making out with her. I mean, we did make out pretty quickly after we got to the hotel, because she was 26, I was 26, we were two consenting adults who had been talking on Skype about doing these things things to each other a couple of weeks prior. He immediately starts taking off articles of my clothing. We had only been there for not even 30 seconds. He gets me on the bed, still kissing and touching me. Between his kisses was me going, no, 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 no. Okay, that's gross. How many times have I talked about people saying no, grossing me out? If anyone wants to turn me off, tell me no. Just ask my wife. She's told me no before. I get super flaccid, super fast. Sometimes you'll find me pouting, maybe even tearing up, because that's how pathetic I am when it comes to rejection. This girl should know, because after we made love multiple times, the next morning she wouldn't even cuddle with me. And when I started started crying, she said I wasn't a man. God forbid someone who made love to you actually wants to cuddle with you after. I'm so revolting, I know. She said she finally pulled away long enough to remind me that I said we were supposed to wait a month, that maybe we should get to know each other before we jump into sex. That just seems like BS. Ask any girl I've ever been with. When have I ever said, oh, we should wait to have sex? Like, never. <laughs> what I did say down the line to her, however, was that we should wait like a year before we get married, because she said she wanted to marry me within 30 days. And yeah, that was fast even for me. Apparently, I said to her why as I continued kissing her, and then she realized she was fighting an uphill battle, so she gave up and went with it. Actually, what really happened was I asked her to suck me, and she even made fun of me phrasing it like that, me saying suck me. She proceeded to spitting on my genitals, which was gross, and then she did this weird sloppy wet BJ thing, which was literally sexually the worst thing I'd ever experienced. It was like she thought we were making a porn and not making love. She still haunts me to this day. That's why you don't jump into relationships right after you end another serious relationship, because you'll wind up dating someone you didn't even realize was a hater in the first place. Hence why she immediately went to the hate blogs right after I broke up with her for like the third time or the second time or the fourth time, I don't know how many times I dumped her. Anyway, the same girl wound up writing me letters saying how sorry she was and told me that she was moving to my area. She gave me her phone number, said she wanted to be my friend, etc., etc. And of course I wasn't interested because by that time I had already found out how fake she was. Here we have an ex-fiance. It says we started dating when she was 17. That's totally true. I think I was 24 or 25 at the time and that was the serious relationship I was talking about. It came just before the relationship I had with the 26 year old. He told me when they were dating they would drive to or meet up in any states they could where 17 was was the legal age of consent. Uh, I didn't do that at all. In Canada, the legal age of consent was either 14 or 16 at the time. Either way, I was completely good. And I forget what state she was in at the time. Pretty sure it started with a P. But the legal age of consent there was also 17. And she was only there to do some physical training because I assumed the record label she was working with felt like her body weight wasn't acceptable. I, however, thought her body weight was perfectly fine and thought it was terrible that the record label was body shaming her. She was like 5'0 and 170 pounds, which guess what? Can still be really attractive. So yes, I did meet up with her one time in the States, specifically one state 
dates, and we had an amazing time. At one point, the police showed up, her grandma tried to get me thrown in jail, but problem, the police had already cleared me, saying I had done nothing wrong. So again, if anyone wants to be offended by the relationship I had, you should probably try to change the legal age of consent, rather than trying to enforce your own worldview on people. This is the world we live in, so let's stop acting like people following the law is somehow a shameful thing. Said I filmed her having a seizure for views, and I never took her to seek medical attention. Actually, I filmed her having another episode, one similar to one she had had before, to show her on camera what she had done, and she in fact watched that footage and gave me consent to upload it, only to, as I was told later on down the line, tell people that that episode was actually fake. So no, based on that information, I did not film her having a seizure, I filmed her faking a seizure. Allegedly, she also claimed that I pushed her into a door frame, which caused her to miscarry their unborn child. Once again, whenever there are any physical altercations, I called the police right after to ensure I had done nothing wrong. And of course, this doesn't mention all the physical things she did prior to me getting her away from the door so I could close it so she would leave me alone. I've already laid out in previous videos how impossible it would have been for me to push her into a door frame and how odd it would have been for that physical altercation to have caused the death of a child, a child which she was not pregnant with, considering the child she was pregnant with had already passed six weeks prior, as observed by the doula on an ultrasound. So six weeks into the pregnancy, the fetus dies. At 12 weeks is where we had the physical altercation where she was body slamming my door and I got her away from the door so I could close it. You see, this is what happens when you pit a liar against someone who's constantly bluntly honest. You just get one person humiliating themselves with their backwards nonsensical stories, then you got the other person who tells the story as it is, and also, of course, repeatedly has the police on his side. And I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but the police are often smarter than you think. Many of them see domestic cases on a regular basis, and you think these experts who have repeatedly observed my behavior versus other people's behavior would be able to see through any BS. He still mocks her in comedy videos and continues to slander her. Stop. Slander is when you say something that's untrue. Maybe you guys should look up the definition of slander. Oh, heck, I'll do it for you. The action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. Yes, this person you guys are so readily defending now was the same person you would attack regularly while she was dating me. As now, so conveniently, you ignore that baby picture that she stole from another mother. Of what did she name that baby in the picture? Like, Rogue? She implied that that baby died. You know, the baby going by the name of Rogue, the baby she never had. And then there was that time she lied to me and all of you about having sepsis. You guys don't remember that? She's just a hero now because she's no longer dating me. Gotcha. Your agenda's pretty obvious. And what's funny is you guys have done the same thing with my wife. When everything is cool between my wife and I, you guys treat her like garbage. You imply that she's evil, she's like a partner in crime, but if she and I ever have problems, you try to hit her up, get information out of her, treat her like she's a victim of something. You people are completely fake, and it seems like your only real friend is your ego. It says, my current wife was a fangirl, been together since 2012 to present. I contacted her because I noticed that she tweeted me constantly since she was 16. I don't know if I noticed her constantly tweeting me. It was actually around the time that that girl who claims I pushed her into a door frame was caught cheating on me and in fact was pregnant with someone else's baby, which is hella awkward. You know, the person you guys are trying to paint as a victim, winding up being pregnant with someone else's baby while still dating me. It's a little bit awkward for you guys to call that type of person an ally. Regardless, she and I would get back together, break up, get back together, break up. And during the breakups, I would try to move on. So I'd start following people on Twitter, seeing what they're all about. But then myself and my ex would get back together. And you could ask my now wife, suddenly I'd just go cold. Or one day I'd be talking about a potential relationship. And the next day I'd be like, hey, no, no, no. I got back together with my ex, so it's a no-go. But my now wife at the time told me she was about to turn 18, which is why I was willing to pursue her in the first place. But she in fact was not as close to turning 18 as she had told me, which I think she revealed like a month into her relationship or something. They're saying they did not highlight my slut shaming, transphobic victim blaming, inability to believe mental illness is real, etc. I mean, yeah, I have slut shames. I have been transphobic. I have victim blamed. I think when they talk about mental illness, they're talking about cutters. And I still believe that cutting is just stupidity and not so much mental illness. Only I've apologized for a lot of that, especially the transphobic thing. Don't know what I was thinking. And they say my defense is that I am somehow the victim and my ex-wife is a thief. I mean, she did take $90,000, which was weird because when I asked her for a prenup before she and I ever got married, she cried, which kind of reveals her real motive. My defense is that my ex-girlfriend is a hater. No, no, no. She was a hater like before we even met. She just lied about liking me. In fact, you could probably hit up the Wayback Machine and look at her old posts on the Onision forums and find her literally trashing me. I'm not sure if the Wayback Machine recorded every single post she made, but if it did, there's the evidence. They're also saying that my ex-fiance is an evil liar. You know who told me she was evil in the first place and told me to never get back with her? Her freaking producer. That's right, Damon Elliott, the guy who was introduced to me by my ex, told me that she was actually evil. And I was also informed that she herself even admitted during an interview that she is a pathological liar. If you're going to use someone as a reference, try to find somebody who isn't a liar, and that's it. Just find someone honest. Because my ex-wife lied on her divorce papers, which I'm pretty sure is like a crime or something, because it's a legal document, and then later on she agrees to get back with me. Only I didn't get back with her because my friend at the time, Seer, said that I shouldn't get with somebody who's taking money 
from me. And then there's the ex-fiance, self-admitted pathological liar, enough said. And then the rebound girl after the ex-fiance, who was a disaster because she actually hated me the whole time. Hence why she mocked me when I was crying because she wouldn't cuddle with me. And wouldn't you know it, I dumped all of them. Anyway, something else on this site is my wife thanking me for four amazing years, saying here's the bunches more. She attached a photo of us kissing. Absolutely awesome. And they also screen captured her saying we've literally broken up once. Now I hate to call out my wife on that, but I don't think that's true because my wife and I have broken up like I don't know, probably like three, four times. I mean, every time we broke up, it was for like 24 hours at most, but we have broken up quite a bit. But anyway, like I said, if you want to talk to someone who's actually in a successful relationship with me and is not actively dumped by me, then you should talk to my wife. She has a Twitter. Some people conspire that I run that Twitter. So if you don't believe that's legit, you can always comment on her videos. She does read the comments or you can contact her through her Tumblr, etc., etc. But those are the accusations that people have against me. And I think it goes without saying, so I'm not going to say it, but it's pretty obvious what I think of those accusations. Anyway, I hope that sums it up for you.